closing out the remainder of a very hot August in many parts of the central U.S. For today, though, looking in the eastern Caribbean, you can see Tropical Storm Franklin moving across the Dominican Republic. And out there in West Texas, the remains of Tropical Storm Harold. There's what the weather map looks like this afternoon. There's the remains of Harold. Looks like the main precipitation area has moved out ahead of the surface circulation. A very cool and rainy afternoon at El Paso and Las Cruces. And then looking out to the east in the Dominican Republic, there's Tropical Storm Franklin moving across the island and heading out into the Atlantic. We're not really expecting that to be a factor here in the U.S. In the northeastern U.S., we have a frontal system in Michigan and a warm front extending down into Ohio. Ahead of that warm front, a cluster of thunderstorms around Lake Erie, and that's responsible for an SPC slight risk covering this area. A little bit of smoke being reported in upstate New York and New England. So the sunset this evening in Massachusetts, Connecticut, could be a bit hazy and reddish. In the southeastern U.S., a quiet day, just a few thunderstorms out around Titusville up to Jacksonville. The National Weather Service in Huntsville, Alabama, also noticing quiet weather. And on their operations board, they've marked eight days since the last severe weather watch. In Texas, as we've mentioned, the remains of Tropical Storm Harold moving on off to the west, and those hot temperatures are coming back once again. Where I'm at, it's back up to 102, and once again, we're recording in kind of a warm environment. Not very comfortable. A massive area of excessive heat warnings stretching all the way from Houston and New Orleans up to Minneapolis, Chicago, Fort Wayne. Also stretching from Salina and Concordia east to Dayton and Birmingham, Alabama. And as you can see here on the surface plot, much of Kansas up above 100 degrees. We're seeing 104 at Concordia and Salina. As we go a little bit further to the northeast, the dew points. Look at those widespread 70s up to 79, even 80 degrees. And we've had a few erroneous readings from certain stations, like this 90-degree dew point. Some stations have reported dew points up near 90 degrees, and that is erroneous. Some of that is due to evapotranspiration. Some of these stations are sited very close to cornfields. And in a few instances, that has been due to sensor error. In Chicago, sultry heat 97 over 78 Earlier, they were, what was it, 94 over 80, giving them a heat index of 114, and that was the hottest on record in Chicago since 1999. That entire area is under this southerly and southwesterly flow around this ridge in the eastern U.S. So that whole area right there is warm and moist advection coming northeastward. In the southwestern U.S., as we mentioned, once again, the remains of Tropical Storm Harold. And you can see the thickness deficit right there, very faint red line indicating a lower thickness area. Now, of course, these storms do have a warm core. However, with extensive cool air in the low levels, that's going to have an impact up there at 500 millibars. And as a result, we get that lower heights and lower thickness. In the southwestern deserts, still a little bit of moisture, dew points running 52 to 58 out there, and there could be some showers and storms out there. They do have advisories for blowing dust late this afternoon in places like Gila Bend, Casa Grande, and Ajo. Not much going on in the northwestern U.S. except for this front coming through Idaho and Oregon. Some cool air advection in the wake of that. Then heading up to Alaska, getting a little bit active up there, a strong front on the north slope. They are getting winds up to 40 to 50 miles an hour and high surf along the Arctic Ocean shore. 
Some of that cold air is expected to come into the interior, and by tomorrow and Friday that should be banked up against the Brooks Range, and there could be some gap winds with 40 to 50 mile an hour winds in some of the more vulnerable areas. Going out into Canada itself, some northerly flow coming down from the high Arctic, helping to feed this system in the western Hudson Bay region. Smoke continues in northern Alberta, northern Manitoba, and northern Ontario, and continues as well in British Columbia, although there's been a significant temperature reduction and an increase in the relative humidity. So that's a little bit of good news. However, temperatures quite warm on the shores of the Hudson Bay region, up to nearly 80 degrees at Fort Severn. And also some news coming out of British Columbia. They've got a new radar that they've inaugurated. That's going to be the Half Moon Peak radar, replacing the old Mount Sicker station. The new radar, located 40 miles northwest of Vancouver, and that will cover the Strait of Georgia and much of Vancouver Island. And of course, we are coming up on peak tropical cyclone season. The peak sea surface temperatures, those arrive about the second week of September, about the first or second week. But sea surface temperatures are already well above normal. What we have as far as active systems, we're in between major systems. The only big one is Franklin, which is a tropical storm, looking at 35 knots on that, so not too strong at all. But as it moves northward into the Atlantic, it will strengthen very gradually. By Saturday, it should be a hurricane. And over the following couple of days, it'll strengthen to Category 2. It will remain west of Bermuda. After Monday, the indications are not so clear, but I'll show you the GFS forecast. And there you go. These are AWIPS graphics. This is the workstation used by the National Weather Service. So you're seeing actual forecast graphics. These are not dumbed down charts. This is the real deal. So let's take a look at it. This is the GFS forecast right now. This has the low level flow, the isobars in black, and the dark areas. Those are high vorticity. And that basically just shows us where the wind flow is disturbed. So one center right there, another right there. This one is frontal in nature. You can tell that by the thickness kind of packed up against it. And of course, Franklin, there it is right there north of Haiti in the Dominican Republic. So let's carry that forward and check out the movement. We're mostly going to be concerned about that right there. That's Franklin gradually strengthening over the warmer waters. And that brings us up to Saturday. The GFS takes that northeast and then north. And you can barely see Bermuda right there. That's, that's the island of Bermuda underneath that smudge, that blue smudge right there. You can see the storm going west of that, going pretty much due north. This is Tuesday. And then we go into Wednesday and we get some recurvature of that storm. It's taken on an easterly component of movement. So it is probably going to clear the eastern U.S. and remain well out to sea. Now, that could be a factor for Newfoundland. I haven't really looked at that. But anyway, we'll check that out next week. You can see part of that Atlantic subtropical high building bit right back in trade winds across the Caribbean and the Leeward Islands and arcing north, given southerly winds along the Gulf Coast. Anyway, it does look like an outbreak of cold air. You can see that on the chart right there. It's not going to be so cold when it gets down south, but it will be a refreshing air mass change. So that's all going to be northerly winds coming behind that front. So that's next Thursday. Anyway, what we're concerned with on this chart is the tropics. And I don't really see much happening. Looks like a pretty flat, homogeneous flow out there in the Caribbean for late next week. This area around the Cape Verde Islands is a little bit disturbed, but I don't see anything obvious coming out of there. Maybe maybe that right there. I don't know. That's pretty far out. And that's going to be the 240-hour forecast. Some little disturbance right there, but, you know, that's, that's getting into the first and second week of September. 
Of course, we have problems in our own backyard, this 598 decameter high across Missouri. That's partly responsible for that heat wave. Well, I should say that's associated with a heat wave. That doesn't actually cause the heat wave. But uh, yeah, that's a reflection of that. You can see it back and across Texas going into Friday and Saturday. So that heat will continue for Texas. Then we see a bit of a change going into next week. This is Sunday and Monday. Looks like that subtropical high moves back into the southwestern U.S. So a little bit of relief for Texas. You can see the heights going down to 588 to 591 decameters, which is much different from the 597 to 600 we've been seeing over the past couple of weeks. So that indicates a cooling of the air mass. Very slight cooling. Anyway, there goes that other tropical storm out there, Franklin, passing by to the east. There it goes. Next Thursday. The subtropical high builds back in across the four corners, so this is going to make a reappearance. At least that's the way it looks on the GFS. So looking at the European model, very similar with that subtropical high, backing that off into the southwestern U.S. Franklin goes by, very similar to the GFS. That troughing in the Great Lakes looks a little bit sharper. And the ECMWF also has a tropical cyclone out there in the eastern Gulf. So we'll have to pay attention to that for next week. I think the GFS has been a little bit better, though. And then we get into the extended 200 to 240 hours. Yeah, it builds that high right back in across Kansas and Oklahoma. So it looks like that heat will return at least for a little while. So this is a very interesting chart. This is the one kilometer winds and moisture, the moisture indicated by the amount of green that you see here. So definitely a plume of moisture coming up the Rio Grande. The circulation of Franklin right there, you can see the stronger 30 knot flow out there around Guadalupe Peak. And then overnight, it looks like that circulation moves up into northeastern Arizona. This is gonna to be tomorrow morning, about three in the morning. The moisture itself looks like that funnels on up into western New Mexico. And then going into the day tomorrow, very weak circulation over the four corners. Moisture in northern New Mexico, so probably some patchy showers out around that area. And then for Friday, I can see a little bit of circulation there in western Colorado. It's very broken up. There could be some circulation right there, too. It's very hard to pick that out. And... We'll see a moisture axis right through this region right there. So probably a big increase in showers and storms in the Rockies for Thursday and Friday. So here's a look at the forecast for the remainder of the evening. The remains of Harold going into the Four Corners area. Pretty quiet across the central U.S. Just pumping up more of that moisture into the Midwest region. The remains of Hillary. Yeah, that's it right there in Manitoba and far western Ontario. That's coming around the north side of that ridge into the Great Lakes area, and that propagates all the way down into the Great Lakes. In MCS, expected tomorrow morning around the Washington, D.C. area, down into western, or I should say West Virginia. The remains of Harold continuing to move up into the Great Basin and Central Rockies during the day tomorrow. You can see all those storms breaking out. And then going into Friday, Continued wet on the East Coast. The remains of Harold moving into Wyoming and around the Denver area. Gradually becoming frontal in nature. And you can see a boundary right there. The remains moving well north of that boundary. So this is going to be a push of cold air coming south through Colorado and Nebraska. And we get to the end of the NAM chart sequence. And that brings us up to Saturday night. A frontal boundary from the Ohio River region through St. Louis down to Wichita and all the way down towards Dowhart. So this will be some welcome relief for parts of the Corn Belt. Some weather news coming out of Europe. France set its all-time national record for August with 112 degrees at Siran, located about right there east of Toulouse. And Toulouse itself up to 108 which is pretty close to what we've seen here around Dallas. That 108 there was their hottest temperature on record, and many stations in southern France 
reached their all-time record, or at least the record for the date. So hopefully we will see a change to this pattern soon for Europe as well as North America. This has been a very severe summer and I've had about enough of it. All right, I'm going to leave you with some footage taken just this morning in the Texas Hill Country showing the remains of Tropical Storm Harold. So enjoy that. Many thanks to Greg for that footage. We'll see you all back here on Friday for another edition of Forecast Lab. Take care. Bye-bye.